Hi, uh, welcome back. This is my cluster running with seven nodes. I will connect to one of the nodes. First, let me create a bucket from the UI. I'm naming it as a test bucket. I'm allocating 100 MB. Whatever memory you are giving to this bucket right here is per node. If you allocate 100 MB here, the total memory for this bucket in this cluster is multiplication of this value, whatever you are giving here, into the total number of data nodes in the cluster. Suppose I'm giving 100 MB here three data nodes in my cluster, right? So once I create this bucket, we can see the bucket size allocated as 300 MB. So bucket type, I'm going ahead with Couchbase. Advanced bucket settings, you can see a replica. You can enable it or disable it and you can increase the replicas count as well. So this is nothing but number of replica copies. This is nothing but backup copies. If you mention replica one, total two copies will be there in the cluster. One original and whatever replica you mention, that replica copy. So total two copies will be there. If you mention two as replica, total three copies will be there. So on and so forth. If you have three nodes in your cluster, replica one is recommended by Couchbase. If you you have five nodes you can go for two replicas if you have more than five nodes in your cluster you can go with replica three so we are using this replica because whenever a node is failed over because of any network issue or power outage in that time it will enable these replicas as active on the other nodes so that users won't see any downtime they will see minimal downtime until the auto failover triggers so the purpose of the replicas is to serve the user requests in case of any failure these replica copies or replica v buckets are available on the other nodes so Whenever the node which is having these active vbuckets for this bucket got failed over or down abruptly, that time the replica vbuckets or replica copies will be promoted as active and will serve the user request. You can check this box to replicate the view indexes. If you want to specify maximum time to leave, you can do that. Enable here. Compression mode of passive active. You can see that turning this off is not advised and passive means compressed documents can be stored and streamed from the server. Active means the server will try to actively compress the documents in the memory. Conflict resolution type. This will come into picture when you are creating XDCR, cross data center replication. If you have bi-directional replication, which is nothing but master-master replication between two clusters, this setting will be helpful that time. If the same document is found on both masters, on both sides, depending on the setting, either sequence number or timestamp, it will choose the winner. So you can use either sequence number or timestamp to resolve that conflict. If the same document is available on both masters, it will set the sequence number and which one is having the highest sequence number, that document will be the winner and the same content will be replicated on the other cluster. You can choose the timestamp as well. If a document is conflicting on both sides, based on the timestamp, it will select the winner and the winner will be replicated to the other side. If you are using timestamp as conflict resolution, it requires NTP to set up on the cluster. Ejection method has two options, value only and full. Basically, what is ejection method? When the bucket RAM is filled, it is completely occupied. That time, it will eject the least recently used document or least recently used key from the bucket memory. If you select value ejection, so during the ejection, it will only eject the value which will give the performance benefit because key and metadata will remain in the memory. As you see here, value ejection needs more system memory, but it provides best performance. If you select full ejection, during the ejection, everything will be ejected from the memory, including key, metadata, and value. If a user requests these documents again, it has to go through the disk and fetch the data. Basically, you can select this setting as per the application needs. If it is work intensive, it is better to go with full eviction if you are not using those many right intensive workloads then you can select value only bucket priority this allows tasks to be handled based on the priority if you give high priority then those bucket tasks will be given more priority auto compaction setting triggers the compaction process if you want to override the default setting you can do that by default if the fragmentation is 30 percent it will automatically trigger the setting is same 30 percent for view fragmentation as well if you want to allow compaction within certain time interval you can do that by checking this box you can also abort the compaction if it is exceeding time interval you you can also compact buckets and views indexes in parallel. You can see the note, auto compaction settings are unnecessary for memory optimized and plasma based index. So metadata purge interval every three days it will be purged. If you check this checkbox, flash button will be enabled for this bucket. I'm not going to override the default auto compaction setting. I'm not checking that box. Add bucket. This bucket is allocated 300 MB. And if you observe, it is showing remaining to the cluster quota, it is showing as 2.05 GB for memory. This is memory section. How this cluster quota is defined? Go to the settings. Whatever memory you allocate for data service, this is 700 MB, right? This 700 MB is multiplied with the number of data nodes, which is nothing but 3. 1, 2, 3. 
2.05 GB. That is what showing it here. Out of this 2.05 GB, this bucket is allocated 300 MB. You can also see other bucket 300 MB. I am adding a document, saving it. This document should exist only for 60 seconds. So as of now, it is showing one. After one minute, it should disappear. That is all about how to create bucket from web UI. See you in the next video. Thank you.